Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Tad Stefanak and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, and Ian Cassiola with the Community Bulletin Board. Thank you for joining us. Building 19 and a half has been closed now for several years, and finally the buildings are being taken down. Work has been underway to demolish the buildings and remove the debris. As seen here, a number of pieces of equipment have been employed to clean the site for the next project. That project is the previously discussed 47,750 square foot commercial, retail and restaurant space and an accompanying 48,000 48, square foot residential building. Duffy Properties, the owner of the site, has received all the necessary approvals to begin construction. It is working under the legal entity Heritage Trail LLC. However, it, it isn't just the old remnants of the building 19 and a half structure that needs to be taken out of the site. Representatives for the developer were at the recent Board of Selectmen meeting to request an earth removal permit. They said earth removal was needed to level parts of the site and they estimate removing 18,000 cubic yards. The permit was granted on the condition the work be done with the proper dust control and the truck stay off of Cambridge Street during peak traffic hours. The film will be moved to a site on, uh, or sites out of town. The Board of Selectmen also voted to approve a plan that would feature a grass-covered area at the Center Street dead end that could be traversed by emergency vehicles that need to enter the site. The cut-through will not be open to non-emergency vehicles. A Boston-based high-end steakhouse featuring cuisine from Italy is looking to open a new location in Burlington. Davio's Northern Italian Steakhouse has applied for an application for a special permit to occupy the location in the Burlington Mall previously occupied by Bobby's Burger Palace. As reported on B News, Bobby's Burger Palace, a restaurant owned by television chef Bobby Flay, closed at the end of 2016. The current iteration of Davio's was founded in 1985 when Steve DeFilippo purchased a restaurant on Newbury Street in Boston by the same name. He retooled the menu, the space, the wine list, and the place grew in popularity, the restaurant's website states. Since DeFilippo took over the restaurant business, he has since opened locations in Foxborough, Chestnut Hill, Lint and Linfield in Massachusetts, and out-of-state locations in Philadelphia and Atlanta. Davios has a number of menus, each with a range of options, including ones for lunch and dinner, gluten-free options, children's brunch and takeout, the application states that the restaurant is seeking 226 uh, seats, a big increase over what Bobby Flay's uh, Burger, Burger Palace had, excuse me. Though it also points out that with the closing of the Rainforest Cafe, there will still be less overall restaurant seats at the mall. The application is scheduled to be before the planning board on Thursday, April 20th. Prescription drugs can work wonders for their intended users, but when they are abused or used by people who aren't subscribed them, they can be dangerous, even fatal. To help combat, combat that dangerous possibility, the Burlington Council on Aging is hosting part two of the Grandparent Protection Series on the topic of subscription prescription drug safety. The program will be featuring Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan, who will talk about safeguarding medication, how to identify drug abuse in family and friends, and how to get them help and also be available to answer questions. With the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the midst of a public health opioid epidemic, Ryan has developed a free safety program for senior citizens to raise awareness about the opioid crisis, specifically how it directly impacts them and their loved ones. The district attorney will discuss the far-reaching effects of this problem as well as offer tips on how to manage prescription medication using the File of Life program. The program will be from 1 to 2 p.m. on Monday, March 27th at the Burlington Senior Center, 61 Center Street. You can call 781-270-1950 to reserve a spot. It was a day of learning about family history and the high-tech DNA tools available to look into the past and trace a person's lineage at the Burlington Marriott on Sunday. B News Director Rich Hosford was there and has this report. The ballroom at the Burlington Marriott was filled with people last week looking to learn more about their history and the methods they can use to trace their family lineage. It was the 20th anniversary of the New England chapter of the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society, and one of the main topics was using genetics to trace family history. 
Though the anniversary had a big turnout and featured guest speakers like Beverly Morgan Welch, the associate director of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History, the society started small. In fact, at its founding, it was just a handful of people trying to peer into the past. 20 years ago, we had friends over at the National Archives. So we were trying to get information on our family. And with that, someone said, I know of a genealogical system in Washington where uh, it's helpful for blacks to get information. So we left the archives and came to my house. There were four of us, and it was, we were enthusiastic. Start calling the tables. And Barbara we Pierce. decided, well, why don't we start meeting uh, to talk about history, genealogy. As noted, one of the speakers was Beverly Morgan Welch of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History. That museum was opened last September after many years of hard work by a large number of people who raised funds, found artifacts, and put it all together. Organizers at the event at the Marriott said it was important to recognize the historic contribution African American citizens have made in the nation's history. I hope uh, that uh, people will come away with a better understanding of the contributions uh, and the impact that African Americans have had in the United States. For example, for, for years and years, uh, so much of our history, so much of our culture has been left out and uh, omitted, and people don't know about it. Even African Americans don't know about it because textbooks in uh, schools were primarily written from a um, you know, from more from a European perspective, and uh, there wasn't this information. There was also a talk on how to use genetic testing to take a look into family history. The speaker explains what he talked about and what he hoped the audience would take away. Sure. So my presentation was on using DNA in genealogy, and I went through the types of DNA that are genealogically useful, um, how they obtain their material, and then some interesting case studies that have utilized that type of DNA research. I'm hoping that they sort of learn about, you know, the benefits and also the limits of DNA and that maybe you might test today and might not necessarily get the answers you were looking for, but maybe in a few years, depending on how more people might participate or whatnot, you could um, get a, something you were looking for later on down the road. That research can do much towards the goal of the society, which is helping people trace their history and the history of their families. Members said knowing where you come from is important for an individual. It's very important because it gives you a grounding of where you are. If you know, you know where you're from, you know pretty much where you're going. And so it's something I want to pass on to my children, that they will know uh, uh, where their past was from. Well, I think if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. <laughs> That's uh, kind, of, kind of my attitude. So I'm you know, constantly searching, and I've done the, the DNA, but it's really important to have that grounding and to uh, know where your family has come from and it certainly has given me strength um, you know knowing family stories and uncovering things about my family so far it's it, it gives me a sense of of strength and pride at the Burlington Marriott on B News director Rich Hosford another business opened its doors with a ribbon cutting ceremony this week B News reporter Robert Paris was there and has this report a new store for people who enjoy work and play in the outdoors has just opened in Burlington. This week, Duluth Trading Company opened their doors to the public at the Vinebrook Plaza at the corner of Mall Road and Middlesex Turnpike. The Duluth Trading Company is one of the newest retailers to be introduced to the East Coast, and the very first store in Massachusetts is right here in Burlington. Well, we started in 1989 with the Bucket Boss uh, and expanded our assortment to clothing and workwear and outerwear uh, that provides uh, function and form for people in the trades and also in, uh, in active hobbies. Um, we uh, have clothing that suits anybody's needs uh, from casual to workwear. And um, we started opening up retail stores in 2006 and we are officially the 18th store in the company. Within this new facility is a variety of clothing and accessories for indoors and out. 
Um, everything from flannel to underwear to coats, jackets. We also sell tools and knives. Um, we have a lot of things for both men and women. Uh, this holiday season, we started carrying some kids' clothing, which is going to be a holiday-only uh, type of thing. Um, we also have uh, seat covers and things for your automobile, uh, a ton of different things in the store that uh, both provide function, form, and fit. So uh, a lot of things that look great, very fashion-forward, uh, the flannels especially. So. Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce President Rick Parker was at the grand opening and said he thought it was a great fit for Burlington. Well, if you've seen the store, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the, the folks at Duluth have a very good um, track record of, of getting very active in the community. They, they treat their employees well. They have a lot of fun. Um, but the product is no joke. Um, along the lines of most of the companies that are, that are in the greater Burlington area, the products are high tech uh, and they're developed um, for a specific purpose and it's, it's world class clothing. One of the biggest parts of the grand opening was the Lumberjack Show, which featured a demonstration of the steel timber sports competitions where professional men and women compete in a series of lumberjack related challenges. Uh, so today we demonstrated the Steel Timber Sports Series events. We did the springboard chop, which simulates um, how, you know, loggers of old used to get above the big root swell on large trees to the easier to cut wood. Um, so we did the springboard chop, standing block chop simulates felling a tree, and underhand chop simulates bucking that in half before the invention of a handsaw. And then we did the single buck saw, which, which is, you know, a modified, it's a racing saw now, but it uses the same technique that was used in the woods before the invention of a chainsaw. Um, and then Mike demonstrated the hot saw, which, you know, the hot saw is, is like, uh, is, is the NASCAR, the, the, uh, the funny car of our sport. And it's basically a snowmobile motor with a sprocket on it, and it cuts uh, 10 times as fast as a traditional chainsaw. Duluth Trading Company would like to say thanks to the town of Burlington for making their grand opening possible. I just want to thank Burlington for having us. Uh, it's already been a lot of fun, and uh, we're only into week one, so um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to working with them, uh, the customers, and both, uh, both customers and my associates who are also from the area. So it's a, it's a ton of fun, and uh, hope to see them, see them all soon. From the Duluth Trading Company, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. This tax day draws near. The Internal Revenue Service is warning residents that it has, has seen an increase in attempted tax-related scams. A scam alert says that the IRS saw a near 400% surge in phishing and malware incidents in the 2016 tax season. The IRS has issued several alerts about the fraudulent use of the IRS name or logo by scammers trying to gain access to consumers' financial information in order to steal their identity and assets. Scammers use the regular mail, telephone, fax, or email to set up their victims. Scam emails are designed to trick taxpayers into thinking these are official communications from the IRS or others in the tax industry, including tax software companies. These phishing schemes can ask taxpayers about a whole range of topics. Emails can seek information related to refunds, filing status, confirming personal information, ordering transcripts, and verifying PIN information. These emails contain the direction you are to update your IRS email e-file immediately. The emails mention us.gov, usa.gov, and irs.gov, but these emails are not from the IRS. The sites ask for social security numbers and other personal information which could be used to help file false tax returns. The site also may carry malware which can infect people's computers and allow criminals to access your files or track your keystrokes to gain information. <coughs> Excuse me. Burlington Parks and Recreation turns 50 this year and is commemorating the occasion with a host of special events throughout the year. B News reporter Tad Stefanak paid a visit to the Grandview Farm where Burlington families were having fun and getting in it to win it. The Burlington Recreation Department is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year and along with the rec's usual array of seasonal activities, they're holding a series of special events for Burlington residents commemorating their golden anniversary milestone. The most recent of which is an interactive family game show filled with challenges that had participants dancing in the aisles. 
We have a in it to minute family game night going on for our, to celebrate our 50th anniversary of Parks and Recreation in Burlington. It's similar to the uh, game show that used to be on TV called Minute to Win It, but it's a little different because it's called In It to Win It. Host Paul Giroux of Perfect Parties in Peabody instructed the family teams on the various skills, abilities, and physical challenges they would face, while the rec zone Jesse Hampson filled the teams in on the fabulous prizes, including a free bouncy house for a day, tickets to the Tots Field Fair, Water Country, Canopy Lake Park, Six Flags New England, and AMC Theaters. So we have families competing for great prizes from the Burlington Parks and Recreation Department. The In It To Win It games were a hit, filled with fun, energetic challenges for both parents and kids. And the Burlington Recreation Department has more great activities to come to celebrate their 50th anniversary. Coming up in April, we're going to have a Youth and Family Services Day um, with a bunch of events uh, going on around town um, on April 8th. Then in May on the 19th, we're going to hold our uh, golf tournament over at the Billerica Country Club. And in June, we're going to have um, a mountain bike event out at the Landlocked Parcel. Bunch of events going on uh, throughout the year. You can get more information on our webpage or joining us on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can get the most up-to-date information and uh, come out and enjoy a special event for our 50th anniversary. Help us celebrate. From a rockin' good time at the Grandview Farm, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. Back to you in the studio. We got, we got some gymnastics going on. At the recent uh, People Helping People event, I was able to speak with Bob Buckley, an attorney with Reber and Bronstein, who has been prominent uh, and part of many of the development projects in town. It was a wide-ranging conversation on changing trends in shopping malls, commercial development, and transportation. Uh, here's a brief clip. You can see the full uh, interview. Thanks for your time, Bob. Always a pleasure, Phil. I happened to catch uh, Henry Davidovitz on Bloomberg the other day on the state of retail in the United States. And his comment was striking in that he said that uh, it was likely that 30 percent of the malls in the United States would be closed in the next 10 years. So what are you seeing in the development uh, community locally, nationally? Uh, what trends do you see? Well, I actually think that's a low number uh, from what I'm seeing on the retail side. Um, already in other parts of the country, they're repositioning uh, the regional malls. Mm -hmm. um, all you have to do is pick up the daily papers and see that large format retail is having its difficulties mm -hmm. and it's likely to see in the next six to eight months some major failures. Mm -hmm. um, Macy's, Sears, yeah, J.C. Penny. Yeah, and, and you know, some of it's that they're not quick enough to respond to their customer base and p people's habits are changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, an example. I used to walk over periodically to the Burlington Mall because I like the art of shaving. Mm -hmm. So they said to me, why don't you do the replenishment service? We'll send you it every three months. Mm -hmm. so, so I think you're gonna see malls being repositioned. Some of them are stronger, the Burlington Mall and some of them in the Eastern Massachusetts are very strong. Mm -hmm. But everyone's competing for the same basic tenant. In my view, uh, 10, 10 years from now, you're gonna see regional malls being a an activity center where you'll have mixed uses in terms of housing, educational, a lot of universities and, mm -hmm. and uh, community college elsewhere in the country are taking over the, the mall areas because they're large format boxes and they can go in there and reposition them. That's bad for the tax base though. Huh? It's very mm -hmm. bad for the tax base. You can watch the full interview at www.bcattv.org forward slash bnews. Middlesex Sheriff Peter J. Katusian has been honored by a National Prison Reform Advocacy Group for his work in improving medical treatment for prisoners suffering from addiction. The Coalition for Public Safety named Katusian its Champion of Justice Reform for the month of February. Sheriff Katusian is just the second Champion of Justice Reform selected by the Coalition for Public Safety, a leading national nonpartisan organization dedicated to criminal justice reform. According to the release, Sheriff Katusian was recognized for his efforts to use medication-assistant treatment as a way to address the opioid crisis and health insurance as a re-entry tool for those leaving custody, as well as the establishment of Massachusetts' first housing unit for military veterans. 
Coalition for Public Safety President Stephen W. Hawkins said Katusian's efforts are a prime example of what local leaders can accomplish when they commit to smart justice policies that prioritize rehabilitation and recognize reducing crime is tied to providing people with opportunities to live better lives. Katusian said he appreciated the recognition of his and his team's work. Spring is here, but so far it hasn't really felt like it. Uh, who knows when golf opening day is going to be. To see if that trend will continue, we go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown for the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Ian Cassiola to see what's happening in and around Burlington. Well, hello everyone. This is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the upcoming week. And I know we're getting towards the tail end of March and we are officially in spring, but as you probably realized the past seven days or so, it has felt anything but spring-like around here in the Burlington area. And unfortunately, to start off our next period, starting off this Friday, we're going to see temperatures again in the 40s, but in the low 40s. So temperatures are going to be about, you know, six or seven degrees below average. So we're still going to be looking at a little bit of a chill in the air, even as we're getting towards the last week of March. As you can notice over here, um, as we get towards the tail end of March, we start to see average highs in the 50s again. So that's definitely a sign that spring is progressing along, but we're going to be actually pretty far from those temperatures um, by the time we get to the end of next week. Of course, though, the best thing that you notice, look at this. The sun is now setting after 7 o'clock at night. So if you have plans after work and everything, dinner plans, you have plenty of daylight now. So that's a great part of the season coming up, that's for sure. As we look ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going to be going on with our weather for the next seven days. And this is probably not a weather map you really want to see getting into the latter portion of March. We're going to see a couple of weak systems traversing our area here in Burlington um, over the next maybe three to four days or so. So what we're going to be expecting starting really on Sunday and going into next Tuesday, we're going to see again a series of weak low pressure centers rotating around this cold high pressure center up in Canada. This is going to bring us a chance of um, wintry precipitation for about three days really off and on. We're going to see a mix of rain, sleet and snow over here in the Burlington area that's going to last approximately about 72 hours. Now, it's not going to be one of these big, huge, prolific storms that we saw in the past few weeks. Just going to be a little bit more of a nuisance thing every day, and we could see a coating of snow then mixed with some sleet and some rain. So just really cold, damp weather coming up for the next few days here in New England. But the next graphic is something we actually haven't been focusing too much on this winter, and the reason why is we've actually had a very, very wet winter. And when we go ahead and I show you the... Um, next map which is going to be about the upcoming um, drought severity here in New England. Look at this up here in the Burlington area in southern New England. This green color that you're seeing on the map is basically an outlook from the um, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration regarding drought development in the U.S. This green color though here in southern New England in the Burlington area means that we have the potential for drought conditions to go away as we get through the latter part of spring. So that's really something that we needed to hear. It's That puts us in a great shape going into the warmer months when we get into summer. And of course in the typical areas in the southwest over Texas there may be a little bit of drought development but all in all looking at this map the United States for the next three months there's really not much drought really in the country and again here in the Burlington area our drought may actually be lifted which will be great. And as we move ahead I'm going to show you a little bit about that chilly forecast coming up for the next seven days. As you can see here on Friday, we have the chance of maybe a few light snow showers early in the morning and temperatures warming up and warming up is just relative into the low 40s by the afternoon. Saturday looks to be the pick of the weekend coming up. We're going to see partly cloudy skies and temperatures in the mid to upper 40s, maybe touching 50 in some areas around Burlington. But of course, we get Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and look at this, a return to reality, unfortunately. Temperatures are only going to really be between 35 and maybe 42 degrees these three days introducing the chance of a lot of mixed wintry precipitation overnight into the early morning hours each day. And of course, once we get towards Wednesday and Thursday, it looks like the sun's going to try and come back out again. But look at this. Temperatures are just staying very, very cool for this time of the year. Again, ending out the week only in the upper 30s when we get towards the end of March. So folks, hang in there. We are getting towards April very soon, and we know that there's going to be some warm weather coming up. But I hope you have a great week and enjoy the weather.
Hello, and welcome to your community calendar. Are you ready for some musical entertainment? On Thursday, March 30th from 7 to 10 p.m., Chop's American Bar and Grill in Burlington is having Cali Stoddard Amari to come perform at Chop's. Cali Stoddard Amari grew up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, playing around with poetry, hip-hop, and chorus until he picked up the guitar at 17. His attention was always rooted in music, but the guitar gave him insight and opened his eyes and ears to a new world of musical creation. Everyone is welcomed. For more info, visit chopsamericanbarandgrill.com or call 781-221-6643. It's time for teens to get locked in. On Friday, March 31st from 6 to 9 p.m., the Burlington Public Library is having a teen lock-in. Come have fun at the library during after hours. There will be a survival movie, games, activities, and pizza. The event is for teens in grades 6 through 12. Registration is required and a signed permission slip. The permission slips must be received before the lock-in begins, and teens must arrive before the library closes at 6 p.m. Anyone who is late will not be admitted in. For more info, visit burlington.org or call 781-270-1690. Roses are red, violets are blue. Here's an event just for you. On Saturday, April 1st from 5 to 7 p.m., the Barnes & Noble in Burlington is having a poetry open mic night to kick off Poetry Month, which is in the month of April. Bring your creativity to the mic stand as you will be reading your own poems that you have created. Everyone is welcomed and the event is free. For more info, visit barnesandnoble.com or call 781-273-3871. This has been your community calendar. I'm Ian Cassiola. Back to you in the studio. Okay, let's try again. Our weekly sports report is still on hiatus until the spring season gets into full swing, but we do have a short sports-related story. Burlington High School star wrestler Josh Lee has been named the Boston Globe's All-Scholastic Division II Wrestler of the Year. In the postseason, Lee won the Division II North and Division II States and took a first and a third place in the All-States. He came in second overall for his weight class in the New England Tournament. He has had several postseason, he has had a record, uh, postseason record of 35 and 6. Earlier in the year, Lee also won the Lowell Holiday Tournament, becoming the first junior to take first place in the event in two consecutive years. In hockey, Burlington High also has some athletes that have been recognized. There are Freedom Division MVPs, Patrick O'Halloran on the boys' team, and Kat Nicolopoulos and Kylie Glennon on the girls' team. Riley Glennon, excuse me. Finally, Drew Metzdorf, Frank Bonanno, and Paul Barbieri are Middlesex League All-Stars. Finally, another week, another photo to highlight. This week's photo is a look at an annual celebration in Burlington's historic Grandview Farm. It is of the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce Spring Soiree, which is a festive evening for its members. Chamber President Rick Parker explained that it is the organization's annual holiday party, but in the spring, so it doesn't bump up against other holiday activities. If you'd like to see your photos, they could be of something you see around town, the weather outside your own door, or even photos of your family members and pets. Whatever you think is interesting and would like to share, we'd like to see. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line photo of the week. Okay, that's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher, along with B News Director Rich Hosford, Tad Stefanak, Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, and Ian Cassiola with the community calendar. Thank you for joining us.